Welcome to another exciting edition of American Warrior Radio, the place to be for news, notes, interviews, and current events for all issues military and veteran related. If you or someone you know has ever worn the uniform of the U.S. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, or National Guard or Reserves, you've come to the right place, American Warrior Radio, right here on the Talk To Me station, AM 1300 WMEL, sponsored as always by AVET Project. Folks, this program is all about supporting our troops and their families, both past and present. So please, get comfortable, grab a cup of coffee and maybe a pencil or paper to jot down a note or two, because we're always efforting to bring you important information that you can use and share with others. With that said, let's roll down the runway and get this show off the ground. As you all know, my name is Garen Cohn. I'm an Air Force veteran, a retired legal advocate for veterans, and founder of AVET Project, but I never fly through the airwaves alone. Good morning. I'm Glenn McGuffey, manager of your Brevard County Veteran Services team, and I'm retired Air Force, so we got a couple blue suitors coming at you. Actually, today we got a three blue suitors coming at you. We have a very special guest uh, who's going to talk to us about programs and uh, directed for military families and everybody in general at the Y. And take it away, Garen, and introduce our guest. Well, we're very pleased to have with us somebody I think a lot of you know that live here in the Melbourne area because I know I see him everywhere out and about. Joe Rowlett from the YMCA, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure being here. Glenn, uh, Garrett, thanks for inviting me. Of course. Now, as a matter of fact, we just arranged this. We had somebody drop off the American Warrior Radio program that was scheduled to be here, and we're so thankful you stopped in. But guess what? We just talked again, kind of reconnected after a bit, at the community blueprint held by the MOA, Military Officer Association, just this last week. What did you get out of that? Well, I think that was great. Um, you know, I think different uh, agencies, n- non-for-profit, private, are trying to do their best to welcome the vets back home and also to support any active uh, military. And I think that Community Blueprint, um, we, we saw, what, maybe 50 different organizations there all coming together. And I think it was kind of neat because Brevard County was kind of setting the stage and being one of the first or second blueprints around, right. around the country. So yeah, yeah we're great. excited about that. Yeah, I was excited about that. Uh, if nothing else, the cross-references that were obtained at that are going to be very valuable to everybody that attended, but I know it, it's going to be of great value to me and, and our veteran services team in helping refer people to other places to get help that the VA may not be able to provide, but the local community can. De- definitely. Yeah. And and I'm uh, give us a little biographical information on yourself, Joe. Where you're born and raised? Any any family experience with the military? Uh, how long with the YMCA? That kind okay, of thing. Okay. Sure. Um, well, I was born and raised here. Um, I'm one of 11. So you're a Florida native. Well, I'm you're Florida one native. of the natives. I'm, I'm All right. born and raised in Holmes Regional Hospital. <laughs> and um, I'm one of 11. So we, we have a big family. My dad uh, started a business back in the 50s over on the beach side. So he was one of the one of the first employers on the beach. And he was close to Patrick Air Force Base. So growing up, we see a lot of the different GIs coming through. Um, he, he, owned a, he owned a tire store. So getting tires, getting automotive work. Um, being, being six brothers... Not everybody could work at the store, so my my next oldest brother Carter went into the Air Force out of high school, had a 24 year um, uh, career, and just retired a couple of years ago. So, you know, it, the vets coming That's home. That's off to him, by the way. 24 yeah. years in the Air Force. What was his uh, specialty? What was he doing with the Air Force? Well, he he was um, he, he went airborne. He didn't fly, but he went airborne. I know he has some uh, some AWAC history, some J Stars. Um, so, you know, coming home, I, we were fortunate that he was safe. You know, you know, he, he came home just better than better than when he left home. So we were just pray to God that you know he's fortunate to, and he's got a second career started now. He's out in California, um, working for for the Department of Defense as a contractor. Great for him, no doubt. And for those that were listening, you mentioned J Stars. That's here with Northrop Grumman. They right. kind of marshal that whole program through. So he was kind of electronic warfare specialist type of deal. P- sounds pretty like. much, yep. Yeah. Doing doing some mapping, um, you know, some some radar work. I mean, you know, a lot of this stuff is just layman's terms to me, but you guys would know, you would know a lot more than, than I would. <laughs> well, and you also mentioned before we went on the air that when he retired up at Warner Robins, yes, uh, they held a nice ceremony for him, and you were kind of blown away by that. It was, yeah, I tell you, you know, the um, I've gone to see him at different bases that he's you know the last you know 24 years, and um, to finally see a squadron squadron throw a throw a you know a retirement party 
It was a ceremony as they held it at a theater, probably 300 people. It was like a movie theater type setting, and his picture, my picture, even was up on the on the big jumbotron. So that was really neat. That was fantastic. <laughs> cool, super cool. So you yeah. got some military family history there. We appreciate exactly. that. But we're here to talk about the YMCA and the awesome programs that you guys offer, not just to military, but pe folks in general. De definitely. I mean, you know, the, the YMCA is, you know, it's, it's been around for over 150 years. It's a type of uh, organization that no one's turned away. Okay. It, it, it's, so it's what's a common YMCA way. stand for? Well, does anyone know? <laughs> it, I do, yeah, but yeah, I'm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I throw, do. Throw it out there. Make, make you think for a second. It's a Young Men's Christian Association. Uh, but something happened interesting. It's a non-profit. It, it, we're a non-for-profit, non 501c3. Um, young, young Men's Christian Association, but you don't need to be uh, young. You know, we have our, where I work, my oldest member is 91 years old. Awesome. Um, nationally, I've heard there's more females now in the organization. There's more females uh, involved with the YMCA than there are males. So I'm going to say, come on, guys, we got to get out there and... And, and sign up, sign up the YMCA so we can take take over again. They're going to have to change it to the YPCA. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. And then, of course, the C, you know, the C is, is Christian. We we have Christian values. It's a Christian-based organization, but you don't have to be a Christian to, to go there. You don't have to be a Christian to work there. Uh, but we just have, <coughs> we just honor Christian-based values. And I think it's important to mention, I'm, I know everybody pretty much knows this, but if you're listening someplace else, in the United States on AM 1300 WMEL or 1300WMEL.com or you catch this on a uh, episode of YouTube, just check out your local Y because you're, you guys are everywhere and the programs you offer are pretty much, even though the facilities may be slightly different and the offerings may be different, there's a YMCA pretty much in any locale. They're, they're pretty much, yeah, there, there is. I mean, there's over 2,000 YMCAs. Um, you can go to YMCA.net. That's an important uh, yep, one, ymca.net, not and, .com, but yep, .net. .com, right, exactly. Uh, .net, and you can type in just the city, the um, zip code, um, and it's very easy to search, and it will it'll pop, populate YMCA's, you know, in the 30-mile radius. Excellent. So. Now, uh, Glenn was asking some of the programs that you have. Uh, do you have any uh, junior sports leagues or anything like that for the kids? Right, well, we're here locally, um, our Titusville Y and, and our Coco Y, they, they specialize in our, in our sports. We've got uh, youth basketball, youth soccer, but um, county-wide and pretty much nationally-wide, um, you talk to people, and people always say, well, I learned how to swim. I learned how to swim at the Y. So most YMCAs, or 90% of our Ys, have pools. So so teaching swim lessons, teaching drowning prevention, and, of course, competing on swim team is something that you'll see nationally. And I'll mention that my granddaughter learned to swim at the Y, too. Hey, so. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's oh, yours. Oh, yep. no kidding. That's, that's, that's great. One, she took one circuit of training there for sure. Yeah, that's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a great. And it's great to see to, to work at the Y, and to see these kids learn how to swim, and then five years later they're on the swim team. Um, we have parents, you know, give us testimonials where where an infant would, would fall into a pool. They're able to pick themselves, you know, turn themselves over and swim mm -hmm. to the wall. So so drowning prevention is, is number one. Extremely and how, how young do they start with those drowning prevention classes? We, we at, at our particular Y, we start um, six weeks and older. So I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I'm six, six months. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> six, six months and older. We, we take kids into the Y through a child development program starting at six weeks. So that way they're acclimated to the facility. But they don't get into the pool until till six months. And then they become little dolphins like our little girl. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you can't keep them away from it. Uh, what are some of the other programs that you guys offer? I mean, you talk about weight training, aerobics, things like that, right? Yeah, well, we have, um, you know, you, get, you have anything from, from yoga to Zumba. Uh, we have exercise machines, both cardiovascular and resistance. Um, and it's, it's, uh, we even have, a, you know, most of our lobbies are just a gathering place. And that's one of our biggest programs, just our seniors coming together. Um, even vets. Are you all even, listening up now? Yeah, even our vets coming in. We always do coffee. We've got coffee at every Y. <laughs> so we have people coming in just to come in more for the social aspect, come and have a cup of coffee, you know, spend time with their friends. And if they exercise, that's great. If they don't, <laughs> at least they're getting out of the house and they're, they're hanging with their friends. Exactly. They walk from their house to their car to the Y. So, heck, that's getting some exercise. Uh, I'm being the producer saying senior classes. You offer it for all range, all well, age we, ranges. Yeah, we, we do. I mean, our seniors, um, the, we, we have specialty classes just geared towards seniors. We have a, what's called a gentle yoga, and, and it can be for anyone. But most of our seniors, they'll, they'll, they'll migrate to that, scene, to that gentle yoga. We have a new program called Silver Sneakers, and Silver Sneakers is another national kind of program. That the As we wise. all look at Glenn. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm, Never listening, mind. I'm listening intently. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Silver Sneakers. So, and that's an armchair aerobics. And yeah, we just got certified in that. We just got our, got, you know, we're, we're able to provide that program now. So we're happy to say twice a week um, it's, it's, it's a gentle form of exercise. It's, it's in, a, um, in a chair. And it's basically armchair aerobics. Half the chair sitting down. If people can stand, they can stand, but with the support of a chair. Now, Joe, you seem to know a whole lot about this, and we kind of skipped over this. What is your position with the local Y? Well, my, my title is, is a Operations Director of the Suntree YMCA in so Melbourne. So you're the big dog. At, at, that, at that Y. Okay, Operations <laughs> yeah. Director. Operations Director. And I always say the, the members pretty much run the Y. You know, they say, they, they say, well, you run the Y. Well, I do and I don't. Basically, it's, it's membership driven. You know, members come in, and, and it's all about the members. It's all about the families and the individuals. And I want to mention to everybody out there in Radio Land listening to American Warrior Radio that Joe has generously provided lots of uh, temporary but free memberships that we've handed out to the military on past occasions. A lot of you folks that are listening have probably even picked one up, and hopefully you used it because he made it available to you, and we hope to do something like that in the future. But what type of programs do you have right now specific to our military members? Well, one of our biggest programs is, is, an, is a combination of the YMCA of the USA on a national level with the USOC, and that's a military outreach initiative. And what the military outreach is, if um, a, a spouse, a husband or a wife, is deployed overseas, usually it's Iraq and Afghanistan, but there's other deployment, um, the family that's left behind gets a free six-month membership. So let's say somebody here from Patrick was deployed. We know a few that with the weather squadron are on unaccompanied tours. What's that mean, Glenn? That, that means that the military member has, gone, has had to go somewhere to serve our nation and they can, are not able to bring their families with them. Right, so they're left back here okay. at home. Would, that would be one of the qualifiers possibly? De definitely so. There, there, was a, there was a way to, 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 get, um, to get qualified and to make sure that you're eligible for that. But um, most people who, who register, they, you know, the eligibility is right there. Um, they can go on through the website. Let me get this for you. It's militaryonesource.com. MilitaryOneSource.com. Y'all should be familiar with that. And they can go in there, and then there's a, there's a spot on there for the YMCA um, uh, program. If, if, if it's difficult, always always say, come into the Y, come to the front desk of any of your YMCAs, and we'll work through the paperwork to, to get you started. Um, but that's a great program. Now, there is a catch, like, like anything. It's six months, and they have to use it a certain amount of time. So, and, and we do check people in, so that's the only catch. The only catch is that they have to use it. If they can't just sign up and not come back. Exactly. We want them to we want engage. Them. We want them, and, and that's part of the program. They, um, they do get checked in. I think I believe it's eight times a month, which is which is not bad. You know, a couple times a week, come in, use use the extra, use the facility as an individual or with the family, and then when 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 that's caught, when they show determine that, then they get the other six months. So six months up front, make sure they use it, then we'll give them another six months. Which is incredible because you really are incentivizing them to come and use the facility, use the membership, which gets them out of their, you know, deployment funk. You know, their, their exactly. loved one is over there fighting for our country. They're left back here watching over the kids, and it's mostly women, but there are some men that are these absent yeah. spouses. And, and they are also fighting for our country, believe me, when they're left up, uh, home unaccompanied by their military spouse. And uh, that that's a tough road to hoe for a lot of them, particularly uh, the younger, lower ranking enlisted people who don't have a heck of a lot of money to, to get by on. And now you split it up and some of the money's being used somewhere else and some of the money's being used home with the family. And uh, I'm where is your particular Y located, and how many do we have in Brevard County, Joe? Well, good question. We, we, right now we have uh, three in Brevard County, and we're you know, eventually, hopefully, looking to, to increase that number. Right now we're at three. We're at Titusville, uh, we're in Coco, and we're in Suntry, or, or in, we serve the Melbourne area. Um, with those three locations, we offer a you know, variety of programs, a little bit different hours. Some Every Y has their own hours, but most of us, Open real early, say 5.36 in the morning, and we close late at night, 8 or 9 o'clock at night. Um, usually we're seven days a week. Some, some wise uh, vary on the days a week. Um, but, we, but you know, and I, like I said, I'm, I'm, I've worked at the Coco facility. I've worked at Santry. This is actually my, most of us who work for the Y, we move around a little bit. Not, not quite as extensively as, as, as the military, <laughs> but, but we do move around from Y. So this is my fourth, my fourth Y. And, and every Y is different. Every Y offers something a little bit different. Um, each one has their own personality, and that's the, the facility, but also the members who come and use it. Do all three of the facilities in Brevard County offer the same military program you were describing? 
we do. Okay. Yep, we also when we also have a program which is called scholarship. Um, so so any anyone for the active um, who are, are active duty, they can could, could qualify for this. But let's say we have a returning vet who comes home, may not you know may not have a job yet, kind of looking looking for work, um, or, you know there other sort of situations. We do offer what's called scholarship. And that goes back to where no one's ever turned away from the YMCA for inability to pay. So if they came in, they couldn't afford our rates. We try not to make it 100% free. We want them to pay a little something just to, so they have, have some, some ownership. Have some ownership, exactly. Um, but, you know, again, no one's ever turned away. And that's, that's, we're able to do that from the community, um, from the staff, um, volunteers who donate their funds to make sure there's money available for a scholarship. And I think it's important because, as you know, Glenn, a lot of our warriors come back they have pride. They have pride in the job they've done, the country they're serving. They may not necessarily be willing to stand up to the counter and say, hey, Joe, I can't afford to pay. Can you help me? Is it publicized at the Y? Is there, is there ample opportunity for them to see that if they can't afford the full ticket, they can get some help? Well, it kind of works both ways. We, we, when, someone is, when someone does qualify and their own scholarship, no one else knows it. It's, it's, it's all confidential. You know, this is so good. That's a good there's, thing. Not, there's not an orange band or a halo or, you know, around them. So no one knows. So unfortunately, it's one of our best kept secrets. We, we don't publicize it enough. And I think that's probably the reason why, because we want to try to keep it confidential, make them feel like you said pride, make them feel like they still, they're still proud of their membership. Mm -hmm. um, but we do advertise, especially right now, the first quarter of, of our year, we really push um, to, to publicize the scholarship program, but also to take money in. Anyone who's looking to, to, to donate, to give to a cause, it, it, it's going to ensure that kids have swim lessons, and ensures our vets have a place to go to exercise themselves. So, so it's a great program. And that's, and that's kind of what separates us from other type of uh, fitness type organizations. Uh, some of the other programs I'm being prompted to ask, karate, racquetball, that kind of stuff. It depends what why you're at. Sure. Um, some of our wives have racquetball. The ones at Central we don't have, uh, but but all three in, in Brevard County have karate, and most of your YMCA's ha have karate around the country, of some form. Uh, but we, we have a, we've teamed up with a great group of, of karate's. It's a shore and uh, style of karate, and these guys and they have the same mission that the Y has. So it's it's a, it's a great great joint venture between us, and we don't add any additional charge. To your, from your membership, karate is included. You don't pay any extra for karate. Is yeah. that does that go to say with the other courses, or are there times when you have to pay some additional? Yeah, there are some. So usually with uh, swim lessons, um, you pay a little bit of additional. Um, swim team. If there's like a youth soccer, youth basketball. But the great thing about that, if you qualify for a scholarship, whatever percentage you're awarded, you get the same percentage on your program. Uh, so let's say you're, you're awarded with 50% off on your membership. Well, you also get the 50% off on, on any, any, anything you participate in. That's wonderful. And I, I heard you say that uh, you've got this great equipment, particularly, I guess, in the facility that you're working at right now. And I know today's military, more than the military when I was serving, uh, is big on physical health and that you can go to the Patrick Air Force Base workout room there and you better pick your time because most of the time it's, it's pretty packed and so I think it's great for the active duty who live in our area right now to pay attention to this because you got Titusville, Coco and Suntree area wise that you could attend if you're living in those immediate areas and do your work out there and maybe not have to bump elbows with 20 other people fighting for the machine. <laughs> What's the early hours for your facilities here? Well, the, my location at Suntree, we, we're open at 530 in the morning. That's pretty and, good. And we, <clears throat> excuse me, we, we run classes starting at 5.45 a.m. We have a group of spinners. You know, we do indoor cycling, and they, they're, they're uh, committed every, you know, three days a week. And um, you probably won't see me there that early. Uh, <laughs> but we have instructors. We have staff. Uh, we have people who swim. You know, people swim right at 5.30 in the morning. Uh, they jump in and, and get started right away. And, Joe, I wanted to ask again, ymca.net is a good website where they can find out all information about the Y, where it's at. You said there's a geolocator. And uh, if they want to make a donation to help support the Y, they can do that there as well. Uh, they can. The, the, usually the easiest, um, we want people to give to, to their local Y. Um, so they're going to give a donation, but there, there is a way to give um, o over the web. But usually it's, 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 you know, it's across the counter or it's a, it's, a, it's a handshake they can pledge. We would prefer to talk to, talk to the, anyone who's going to donate and talk to our donors. Um, 
you know, uh, some of our bigger donors, come on in and, and I'll, I'll give you a tour, I'll take you out to lunch. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Whatever it takes. Whatever yeah. it takes, because cause we want to ensure that no one's turned away. We want to make sure that our seniors, our vets, um, and their kids, you know, and, and everyone's included into the YMCA. Now, this county has, Glenn, 72,000 vets? 72,000 plus, 72,000 is a good figure to work with. And then you factor that by two for the number of dependents that are associated with them. That's a huge number of folks. Do you have any sense of what your participation rate is from the vets in this community? You know, I, we, we really don't. And that's something that, you know, at, at that meeting in our blueprint, you know, I left there thinking about that. And I know when we talk um, to our members, you know, we, we get, you, you hear stories, um, and we, you, you know they're a vet. Uh, but really, that's something we, we, we really should look at and look at our population. Um, we do know that that's probably an un untapped, uh, I won't say market, market, market well, you know, for lack of better terms. Sure. But it, it, it's a group of people that we could do a better job attracting and getting them, getting them into the Y. Because like you said, Glenn, you know, they, they, they're used to exercising. And especially with the Air Force, when I went, went to visit my brother's bases, I mean, the amount of equipment, and this is all up-to-date up-to-date equipment so and all of a sudden one day now they now they don't have that available to them and they're used to doing that so that's I me mean, that's where the Y could can step in and let, let, let that be a, a continuum for them oh absolutely and it'll expose them to the other programs the family programs uh, and programs they may personally be interested in exactly and I think in some future time we'll invite you to join AVET project for one of our uh, dinners for families of the deployed at Patrick Air Force Base because that's that's a niche market right there of spouses that are certainly going to be interested in what you have to offer. Yeah, that that'd be that'd be great. Okay, camps. What kind of camps do well, you offer? Well, the, the YMCA, you know, it, it's um, when other people say, well, I learned to swim at the Y, but I also went to summer camp or I went to different type of camps. Um, my particular Y, we don't do any type of um, traditional camps. We have some non-traditional camps that are more like two, three-hour snippets during the summertime, like a cooking camp. We've done anything from a Spanish camp, learn, learning Spanish language. But otherwise, our Coco and our Tide of Hawaii, they have a, a drop-off camp. And that's, that's where the parents work. Kids are off for, for the summer. They drop them off anywhere from 7, 8 in the morning, pick them up 5 or 6 o'clock at night. Now, we do have Camp Weewa, which is part of our Central Florida Y. And Camp, camp Weewa is an Apopka, and that's a stay-away camp. And um, it's beautiful, beautiful like place. Like a week at a time, something it's like a week, that? Exactly, a week okay. at a time. Um, it, probably fills up pretty quick too. it does it does they're, they're packed um, I've had the opportunity of going to spend a day spend a day there um, but they do water skiing they camp out there's, there's bonfires and um, you see kids go away when these camps you drop them off on a Sunday pick them up on a Saturday and they're a change kid for the better they, they, they change it in the right so that's the old traditional camp I'm used to hearing about. Yeah. That's great. For yeah, sure. But not to not to say anything bad about these short-term camps because those are also great because the children are learning other skills and th uh, that they wouldn't otherwise probably learn, and that that's wonderful. And and particularly for the working parents, when you have camps that were they're available to drop them off for a whole day. Uh, Outing, right, so and, and I think, programs. and I think the parents want to—they want to be comfortable, and and it goes with any of our programs. You know, all of our staff uh, were, were CPR, AED certified, but there's also an extensive background check before we can even hire anyone, before anyone can volunteer at the Y. There's always a background check, so I think there's a peace of mind. Uh, any type of drop off, whether they're going to drop the kids off in our child development center, because if if, if a family comes and exercises, do we have a separate center where the, where the kids can go play, do their thing, while, while mom and dad? Go exercise, but especially with these drop-off camps, you know, everyone's there's always a background check. Outstanding. That is good to know, and yep. it should give comfort yeah, to those. Excellent that, point. That's great. Well, Joe, we want to thank you so much for being so involved in our community and for joining us on American Warrior Radio today because the YMCA is such an awesome organization. My wife and I have been involved with it for years and years and years, and I know a lot of folks out there have too, but there's also a, a probably fairly large segment of folks that haven't apprised themselves of what you have to offer ymca.net or stop in one of the locations again what about a phone number or a local contact number well um they can my, my they can call me or any any of my staff um uh, locally at 321-259-2929 i'll get that to you one more time 321-259-2929 and that's a direct line into the ymca they can ask for joe um again my last name is Rowlett, but they can ask for any of the staff and you know is anything from directions to what time is swim lessons, um, how big is your facility. So we, we answer all questions through that phone number.
Well, you're doing an awesome job, and you've been doing it for a long time. How long have yeah. you been with the Y? Well, I've been with the Y. The Y is somewhat real, in the situation we're in now, it's relatively new to Brevard County. The Y has been in Brevard since the, since the 40s. Um, but what you see with these three locations is just, just about uh, 11, 11, 12 years. And I've been with the Y when they first came in, came into Brevard County. So I, I, I'm 11 years with the Y, going on my 12th year. Um, so we're, we're kind of new to, the, to Brevard, but again, we're not. And it's funny, every time we, we think we have a start date, someone else brings in a picture of, of a camp they did in Rockledge or in Cocoa. And <laughs> sure enough, it, it was from the 40s or 50s, and it says YMCA. So we're old, older than we really think we are. Um, in, in, in Brevard County, even Central Florida. Uh, well, yeah. we appreciate everything you're doing, especially reaching out to the military family, not just here, but wherever you're listening to American Warrior Radio, get engaged in the Y. You, you can't find a better outfit than the Y. That's my opinion. And I agree, and, you know, it's, it's a safe, fun environment with great programs for the entire family, uh, and I, I'm thrilled to have gotten a great update from Joe today on what the programs are, particularly those that are focused on the military and particularly those focused on the military families whose sponsor is out overseas somewhere on an unaccompanied tour, sometimes uh, horrible places like Afghanistan or even uh, I Korea. guess we have Come a on. few left in Iraq and Korea yeah. doesn't look like a good place to be. No, probably uh, not with the news in the last week so but we really appreciate it joe thank you for anything else you'd like to want well, to give you the last word i just want to say thanks thanks for having me and i appreciate it and I, and I really look forward to working with avet and working with the community blueprint to how how can we better serve our vets coming home and, and the vets who've been been home for a while uh been all, also the active active military as well for sure okay folks that's joe rowlett he's the operations director here in brevard county Thank you so much again, Joe, for joining us. Great information. We'll be touching base with you down the road, see how things are going. Okay. Th thanks again. Thank thanks. you. Glenn, awesome interview. Great.